Welcome, welcome back everybody to my channel. I hope everybody's good and everybody has had a good trading week. Now today I'm going to talk about sniper entries. Now a lot of people talk about sniper entries as being like the holy grail of trading. And the minute that you can enter the market and get into some really tight positions right at the top and at the bottom, then you know what? It just gives you that credential that you know your stuff. But the truth is, guys, it's not true, but there are ways to get sniper entries. And today I'm going to show you three examples on how you can do this. Now, I want to make this disclaimer. I am not taking any responsibility for whatever I tell you now and you then going off and trying this and losing money. Anything you learn from me here on this channel, please backtest, backtest, backtest and make sure you're forward testing and forward testing and forward testing because... What I'm talking about now has come from seven years of experience. And if you think you can take this information and then go and smash it straight out the bag, then you're going to find yourself having some problems. I'm not saying you can't, but you're going to find yourself having some problems. So always test before you put your money on the line. So the first example that we're going to have a look at is scaling down. Now, this involves using lower time frames to identify different structures in the market to then identify potential trading opportunities on the higher time frames to get in early and then take advantage of some really big moves in the market. So the first example we're going to have a look at is on pound yen. So we can clearly see that the structure of this market was to the upside for quite some time. There you go, was up for some time. And then as you can clearly see, we had a very strong rally to the downside. We've created some subliminal lower highs here which you'll be able to determine on the lower time frames. As you go down, the structure clears up for you and you can now see a trend down, lower high, push phase, lower high, push phase, lower high. Now, when we go back to the higher time frame analysis, the first thing that I'm going to say to myself is I'm looking for sales on this market structure. So I have that in the back of my mind. Now, in order to get into this market as tight as I can with the smallest of stop loss and be able to take as much reward from the market as I possibly can, I need to get in high. There's no point me trying to take a sell now, even if I do believe the market's going to go down and put my stop loss above structure and then target some of these structural lows to the left because my stop loss is huge and my reward is only going to be 1.24. That's not what this lesson's about. So how do we do this? Well, first and foremost, it is a game of patience and it really is about waiting to see if the market is going to come back to some of these key levels so that we can get those entries. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to account when I draw my level for as many wicks as I can at the highest point. So as you can see here, I'm accounting for this wick here, this wick here, and this wick here. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, when I'm taking a trade, I want the price to come as high up to the lower high as possible so that I can get my stop loss above structure. Then that means, of course, if I get in high, my stop loss range is going to decrease and what do i mean by stop loss range well this is your stop loss range however small or big your stop loss is this is your range so now let's take a look at this what am i waiting for well i'm just simply waiting for the market to come back to this level will it i don't know would it continue down i don't know but i'm just waiting patiently so i'm going to go down to the lower time frames and we're just going to wait for the market to start moving in the direction that we want it to go so now it's starting to move to the upside. What I want to now do is I want to scale down to my lower time frames. I want to make sure that I can see how price reacts to this level as soon as possible. So let's allow for price to continue moving closer to where we need it to get to. That would do. And let's go down to our 15 minute time frame. Once we're on our 15 minute time frame, I am not taking into account any information to the left. Make sure you understand this. I am not taking into account any information to the left. All I'm going to be looking at is how price reacts at this key level, which we've already marked up on the higher time frame as the area where the wicks were showing signs of continued bearish pressure and where the market is reacting to the most. So let's continue to see how price comes back to this level. Slowly but surely, we'll get there. Here you have it. Now, once the price action gets back to this level, what I want to do is I want to be able to scale down to my lower time frame. Now, you'll have to work with me. Once price was pushing up, it was a big bullish candle. So I'm going to take that information to account, not how price has reacted at this moment in time. So if you are looking at this on a higher time frame, you're going to be seeing a strong 
bullish candle to the upside, whether it be on the 4H, 1H, 15 minute or five minute. But for the sniper entries that I'm looking for, I want to be able to go down to the five minute time frame. Now, remember, this is the area where price is reacted to before. And here, this is the structural high. So I want you guys to understand this. This is the structural high. And what we want to do is take into account as many wick rejections as we can here also. Now, we don't just want price to come into this level. We want price to try to break this level and then fail. That will indicate strong bullish pressure into this structure and then a failure to close above. So let's continue to wait for that information. We're just waiting for the market to come in. Again, once you go down to your five minute time frame, we are not looking at any of this information to the left. We are trusting that this level that we've drawn in is a strong level in the market. So let's continue to wait and see what happens. There you have it. So you can see price has come into this level. We can see how price has reacted to this wick area in the market. And we can also see how price has failed to close above structure. So how do we want to take this? Well, we're going to trust our analysis regardless of the structure on this market. And we're going to trust that this is a key level on the high time frames. So in this instance, the 4H. And we're also going to continue to trust that the 4H time frame is creating a lower high in a downtrend market. So how are we going to take this trade? Well, we're going to hit this trade with an instant execution. That's all we're going to do. And what we want to make sure is that when we're taking this trade, we're placing our stop loss above above where the bodies of the previous candles could not close above before and in this instance this will indicate to us that we have our stop loss in a very safe place now how does this work well you have to understand on all time frames there are structure so if this structure is to the upside and we can see prices failing to break above a key level in the market then what we can anticipate at least for a short period of time that we're going to have an exhaustion on this market before the market continues up even if the 4H time frame is down, we can still expect that to happen on the lower time frame. So what does that mean for us? Well, all we're looking to achieve when taking any trade or should be looking to achieve is a one to one risk to reward ratio to lock this trade in at break even. Now, once we've locked it in, we're risk free and then we allow the market to do what it wants to do. So let's take a look at this example. We've now plotted how we want to enter this trade with an instant execution with evidence of price reacting to the key level and we have our stop loss above where price was a unable to close. So let's head back down to our 4H time frame, and I want you to take a look at this. This is our entry here. Let's pull this over. And when we're taking this trade, we're looking to take this trade back down to our structural level lows. How are we going to manage this trade? Well, we want to make sure that once price gets to in and around this level, because we can see price has reacted to this before, we want to be break even at one to one. As you can clearly see with our stop loss, we have a clear one to one. We want to make sure that when price gets to in and around this level, we can take off some profits at least, or we trail this in to at least one to one so that we secure some profits. And then finally, we want to make sure that we can reach our targets before we get to a level in the market where price is going to react to. Now, as I said, you have to understand and follow me clearly when I explain this. This was a strong bullish candle into that previous level in the market. This was where price was failing to close strong. And that's where we made sure our stop loss was above, which was the bodies. And then here was the level we drew in initially where we expect price to come back to to react. And then continue down. And as you can see, we gathered all that information from our from our lower time frame. And we took this entry based on price pushing into this structure, which is over here, pushing into this structure, failing to close and rejecting with an instant execution. So the whole time we're not expecting price to continue up, we're expecting price to continue down. And as you can see, once you've entered that with an instant execution on the higher time frame analysis, we can see price will react. Now, the reason why this is very powerful as well for sniper entries, and there's no evidence or facts out there that I can back this up with. I can only say from my seven years of experience that more often than not, when price comes back to a key level in the market, you will see a reaction around 90 to 95% of the time. And I'm talking about your high time frame analysis. So let's see what happens. We've now entered this trade. We can see a reaction on this market and we can see price coming back into this level so we can look to lock this trade in at break even. Now price have come back down to our second target. So at this stage, you can look to take off 50% profits or you can trail your stop loss into profits. It's really up to you. And then we continue to place position out. And as you can see, we finally smash profits. 
And now look at this. You have a super, super small stop loss with a huge risk reward ratio of 7.71. And all you've done is followed the directional bias of the market, identified an area in the market where price is reacting to the most. You scaled down, you've identified price attempting to break the structure on the lower time frames and failing. You've trusted that price is not going to break above or close above this structure. You've placed it above where the bodies were closing and not breaking above. Or if you wanted to, you can pop it above this here. It really doesn't matter. And then look at the results. A super sniper tight entry with a huge risk to, huge risk -to reward ratio. And if you wanted to, you can continue to trail this for as long as you want. And you can keep increasing your risk -to reward ratio along with your risk management that you have in place. So that's the first example. The second example we're going to take a look at is on gold. So as you can clearly see on this chart, price is in a strong uptrend, but at the same time, price is not able to break above or close above this area in the market. Every time price comes to this level, look what happens. There's a constant reaction. So what we want to do is we want to see how price comes back to this level and reacts again. But if we wait too long, then what will happen? Price may leave us and then we don't get a sniper entry. Price just continues down and then we just get a normal entry, which is completely fine with a slightly bigger stop loss. So how can we make sure that we get into this trade at the right time so we can get the smallest of stop loss and obviously take advantage of some big moves in the market? Well, what we want to do is we want to take our level and we want to account for as many wicks as we can. So as you can see here, we're accounting for all these wicks here all these wicks here but remember i said we want to account for the highest wicks so we want to move this level up and account for the highest of wicks here so we account for this 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 and this now what we want to also make sure that we're doing in this occasion is identifying the area where price is reacting this is not for a scaling down entry this is going to be for a sell limit entry so now we have the information so what we can do is we can make sure that we're accounting for the area and where price is reacting to at the lowest point for our sell stop. And just to make sure that we have our stop loss in the right place, what we want to do is make sure that our stop loss is above this structure. Now, we don't need to put it above this structural high because this is the area where the market is reacting to the most. So this is completely fine. You just can pop it a few pips above or however you're comfortable to pop this. In terms of management, what we want to be making sure that we're doing is we're managing our trades before price gets back to a key level. So we can go to break even. And if you look at the stop loss range here, you can clearly see that we have more than a one to one. You want to make sure that you can be taking off some profits by the time price gets back down to some of these levels here. And you want to be making sure that you are either take profit by the time price gets back down to here or in terms of your management it's really up to you. Now, look at this. We have a six a one to six risk reward ratio with a super tight entry. And what are we waiting for? Well, we're just simply waiting for price to come back to our level to trigger us in with a sell stop. So let's see what happens. So price doesn't come back yet. Price finally comes back. Now look how price came back to this level and reacted to this area that we've created. Price has given us evidence in the past and is now continuing to give us evidence now. We trust that this is a good trade because we don't expect price to break above this structure simply because we have evidence it hasn't done it before in the past. And let's see what happens. So now we lock this trade in at break even. We now can take off some partial profits or we can move our stop loss into profits, break even profits. And let's see the finale on this. And there you have it, a TP. So again, Another tight entry, beautiful sniper entry right up at the wick area, a nice stop loss and a really good risk reward ratio. Do you need to use a stop loss this small? Well, absolutely not. If you want to take advantage of some big moves, then this is one of the ways you can do it. So I hope this one was helpful. And for our final example, let's take a look at CAD JPY. So let's take a look at this example. We can see now that the market is pushing to the upside. But what we can see is a really strong reaction in and around this area in the market. Now, of course, we can't just use one wick for this example. We need multiple wicks. So what we're going to be waiting for patiently is for the market to create a wick for us so that we can work with it and identify how the market's reacting. 
We do have a second wick now and we can see prices reacting to this level. So what we're going to do is join the dots and funny enough, price reacted to that level exactly where we had it before. And then what we're going to do is we're going to simply wait again patiently for price to come back to this level, to tap it, to trigger us in. And then all we need to be making sure we're doing on this in this situation is making sure that we can manage our trade to break even one to one. Once we've locked it in, whatever the market does after that point is down to the market. But in this instance, we're going to just be waiting for the market to come back. So now we don't have any data to the left. So what do we do? Well, it's down to you. Use your discretion. You can have a big stop loss, a small stop loss or whatever else, but it defeats the object. You're trusting that this level is going to hold and that price is not going to break above. So for this example, I'm just going to use a 13 pip stop loss. And let's say this is our break even. We definitely know we can go break even. We want to make sure that we take off some profits by the time the price gets down here and let's target some of these major structural lows for our profits. OK, so let's drop in this level for a break even. Let's drop in this for break even profits or partial profits off. And let's drop in this level for our take profits. Now, let's see what happens. So we wasn't triggered in here, as you can clearly see. Uh, I probably didn't set this up correctly, but uh, oh, well, it happens. Let's continue. And yes, the market leaves us. So this is just an example, guys, that sometimes you may take the trade or set these sell limits and the market may not come and trigger you in. I mean, it just happens. But I mean, it's being recorded, so I don't want to obviously delete this and act like everything's going to be perfect. This is what happens. The market may not trigger you in and whatever else. So let's just anyway, just continue with our analysis and just see if there's an example um, of how we can try and do this again. So the market is creating a wick here in and around this level. We can see that the structure of the market has been broken to the upside. Um, potentially now we're going to have a lower high. We see a lot of reaction from this area with previous um, past history, candle wick rejections, and we see another one here. And what can we do? Well, we can trust our analysis again. Let's say we enter the trade at in and around these wick rejection areas here. And again, let's see what we can do in terms of our stop loss. So we want to make sure that we're break even in around this level here. So it's about 19 pips. So we can safely say if we go for a 12 pip stop loss, we can easily get a one to one. So let's mark this level here as our break even level. Let's mark this level here as say partial profits off or break even profits. And then let's mark some of these major lows for some huge targets. So let's see what happens. Again, all we're waiting for patiently is for the market to come back. We see the market structure has been broken. We see we have two 4H candles with quick rejections here. We can look for this sell limit and let's see what happens. So we get triggered in to the T. We see that price action was unable to break above this structure and we got a break even trade instantly. So our first example didn't work out too well for us. But now look at our second example. Now we manage a trade to break even profits or take off some partials. And now we smash take profits. So I hope this was very useful to you guys. Watch it over again. Make sure you really understand it. I haven't personally rolled out this strategy, which is a strategy in itself. But I just want to make a disclaimer. Trying to go for sniper entries may not get you far in the long run because you may find yourself being stopped out quite often if you're not really understanding how to approach this. But if you do get into some of them bigger trades, then as you can see here on CAD JPY, you have a seven to one here. You have a five to one here on gold. We have a six to one here and on pound JPY, we have a seven to one here. So the rewards are always going to outweigh your losses. So just make sure you're patient. Use your risk management strategy correctly. And I promise you, you will make money once you've mastered this. As I always say, guys, if you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe. And until next time, take care.